Hey everybody, Stephen here with Small Family Adventures, and I hope you're doing well. It's Sunday, and do you know what that means? It is time for devotions. So let's open up our Bibles to Luke 17, and we're continuing Jesus's um, Jesus's ministry as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Remember, Gospel means good news. This is good, good news, telling about how Jesus came, what he taught. And uh, from there, we can learn, just as the disciples learned, we can learn um, what we're supposed to do and um, how to live in this world. Um, today, we're going to be looking at sin, faith, duty. Uh, Jesus is coming back a second time. And uh, so, excuse me. And, uh, and so, let's get into it. If you have a Bible, go to Luke 17. Um, again, as you're going there. I'm going to try to get through the book of Luke before Christmas gets here. So sometime in the middle of November is my desire to have it done. And uh, so we may go speedily fast through this um, as we learn what Jesus taught. Um, verse 1 of Luke 17. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of those little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. Easy. Are you being a stumbling block for somebody else to sin? Are you encouraging them to sin? Um, Jesus says here to his disciples, it would have been better for that person, you know, if they had not been born. Um, um, it is one thing for you to sin, but to take another person along with yourself to bring them down, not good, not good at all. He says in verse three, so watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. So really, it doesn't matter. Don't stop forgiving. Remember in our life how much Jesus has forgiven us, right? He has forgiven us, and, and who are we to say that we can't forgive? We need to be just as Christ did. In response to this, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. In verse 6, he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And uh, how is that for faith? A mustard seed is very small. And we'd be able to say to a tree, and I, I assume a mulberry tree is probably pretty big. I've not seen pictures or know how big they can get. But um, to be able to say to any tree, be it planted and go over there into the sea, God is saying with our faith, of, it, it, we could have that. And that is in response to, to forgiving. So in other words, if we have faith in God, we can forgive others. In Christ, we can. We have that ability to forgive others. Verse 7. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that you may eat and drink? Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So... Forgiving, forgiving others, forgiving those who have sinned against us. It is our duty. And, uh, and here he says, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we can do it. So let's trust God as we're working through it. It's going to be a working process for some of us. Some of us have a lot to forgive people, um, but we can. And it just... Again, I've said this a few times. We just need to look back and see 
First of all, how much have we sinned against God and how much he does not hold that against us because we are in Christ Jesus, his son. Right? He has forgiven us a great debt. We should be able to forgive others, right? Let's move on. Another section. Jesus heals some more. Ten healed. Now on this way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was coming into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. They believed in what he said he would do. And they went. And as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. This man, he was a Samaritan. Jesus says, were there not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? So it sounds like the others were not Samaritans. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And on the side notes, it, it seems to, to intimate that, that it wasn't just his body that was healed, but that he was healed spiritually. Um, verse 20. The coming, of the, the coming of the kingdom of God. Once... Having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to his disciples, The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, There he is, or here he is, do not go running after them, for the Son of Man in his day will be like lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. So, Jesus is saying there will be a time that he's going to go away. He's telling this to his disciples. And, um, and he said, once I'm gone, don't look for me. I'm not going to be here. I'd be like lightning, you know, uh, you know. So, um, in fact, it'll be his, his spirit that he sends to help. Um, but he says first he must suffer and be rejected by the generation, and that really means, um, without spilling the beans, that he's going to he's going to go to the cross and he's going to die for us. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Verse 26, just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking, marrying and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroy them all. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. Wow. This is something that has not happened yet. The day that is revealed that he's talking about is his second coming. Because he said he's going away. He's going to come back. We, we learned about it in Revelations. He's going to come back for us. We don't know when that is. Only we know he's coming back. And he's coming back to get his bride. Other passages, he says, I go to prepare a place for you, right? And if I go to prepare a place for you, and so on, you can look up the passage. So he's going to prepare a place for us, and he's going to come back. They will be just like this, Jesus says. Fire and brimstone coming down. Wow. It would be just like this in the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, 
no one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. All that stuff you have, forget about it. You don't need it. It's gone. You don't, don't go back. Don't be like this. The next verse. Um, uh, verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Remember Lot's wife. When During Sodom and Gomorrah, when it was being destroyed for their wickedness, she turned around and looked, and she turned into a pillar of salt. She was told, don't look back. Just go forward. Just go forward. And so that is what Jesus is saying to us. Just go forward. You don't need to look back. The past is past. The present is here and now present. So let's go forward. Let's do it. Right? Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. In other words, we lose our life. We give it to Christ. It's his anyways, right? He is our master. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. I tell you, let's see. Who, I tell you, on the night, on that night, two people will be in bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. The disciples. I don't know. I don't understand these last two verses here. Actually, it's one verse. Verse 37. They ask a question. I almost think it's the wrong question. But I don't know. This is just in my head right now. Maybe I'll have more understanding as God provides. But the disciples, I would ask, when? But instead, the disciples asked, where, Lord? They asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. So, and that's the end of 17. And Jesus goes on to a different parable in 18, which we'll look at next week, Lord willing, unless something else comes up. And um, Jesus is coming back, guys and gals. He is coming, just as he said. And we need to be ready. We need to be not attached to things. It's like we talked about last week, right? Uh, where, where's our treasure at? It's in heaven. It's with God. That is where our heart is. Our heart where our heart is, there your treasure will be also. So, that's it. That's it. Jesus is coming. So we need to be faithful. We need to be forgiving. And uh, we need to be thankful, really, with the leprosy. Uh, during that, you know, look who, look who came back. And it wasn't even a Jewish person. It wasn't somebody. Um, it was a foreigner, as Jesus said. So, um, we're going to move on now. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, we have uh, the Valley of Vision. I, I like to read out of here um, for the prayers. And this is a collection of Puritan of prayers and devotions. Uh, I just bought this uh, off of Amazon. It is an old, old book. Um, but it, more than that, the prayers and devotions are from 100 or 200 years ago. So I'm doing the appearance in time. And um, we're going to look at page 61. Amazing grace. And this will be our prayer. If you agree with this, um, you could use it as a prayer yourself. And um, go by line by line if you need to stop and mull over what is being said. Because sometimes the words um, from the old Eng from the, the um, older English, there's a lot being said there. So if you need to, pause each line or a couple lines and, and think about it if, if you want. Uh, but use it to talk to God and to to lean on him, to think of, in this case, his amazing grace and in how this is where our heart is, is him. It is through him, and we look for him, for his glorious coming. And, and uh, he's coming back. He said he will. O oh, thou giving God, my heart is drawn out in thankfulness to you. For your amazing grace and kind ascension to me in influences and assistance of your spirit, for special help in prayer, for the sweetness of Christian service, for the thoughts of arriving in heaven, for always sending me needful supplies, for raising me to new life when I am like one dead. I want not the favor of man to lean upon, for your favor is infinitely better. 
You are eternal wisdom and dispensations towards me. And it matters not when, nor where, nor how I serve you, nor what trials I am exercised with, if I might but be prepared for your work and your will. No poor creature stands in need of divine grace more than I do. Yet none abuses it more than I have done, and still do. How heartless and dull I am. Humble me in the dust for not loving you more. Every time I exercise in grace renewedly, I am renewedly indebted to you, the God of all grace, for special assistance. I cannot boast when I think how dependent I am upon you for the being in every act of grace. I never do anything else but depart from you. And if I ever get to heaven, it will be because you will it and for no reason beside. I love, as a feeble, afflicted, despised creature, to cast myself on your infinite grace and goodness, hoping for no happiness but from you. Give me special grace to fit for special services, and calm, keep me calm and resigned at all times, humble, solemn, mortified, and conformed to your will. My friend, Hope you have a good day. Hope God blesses you in many ways. And would you pray for me this week? I'll pray for you too, okay? Pray that God would work in and through you, love on you, and uh, that we may show love to others as Christ has shown us love. Go with God, and you have a good week, all right? From my family to yours, you have an amazing day, all right? This is Stephen from Small Family Adventures. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.